you probably saw someone's vintage footage and wondered how to create a dreamy, nostalgic look for your own videos. There is a really quick way to do that and I'm gonna show you how. These effects are called bloom and halation and they're actually very easy and fast to recreate. You don't need any special equipment like filters and so on. And today I'm gonna to show you how to recreate that look with some really, really simple editing techniques. First, let's understand what we're dealing with. Now the terms bloom and halation are often confused, but they're not the same thing. Basically, bloom is a soft, hazy glow around bright highlights in your frame. Halation, on the other hand, is a red color cast that you can usually see around the edges of your video, and that is kind of mimicking an old film camera effect. Now, technically, you can achieve those effects with a mist filter, but personally, I'm not a massive fan of those because the effect becomes a permanent part of your footage and it kind of makes your image worse than it is. So I personally prefer to do it digitally. If you want to get a filter anyway, I'll link a decent one below the video. Now, what I do recommend, however, is reducing the sharpness in your camera before you start recording. That really helps to sell the film effect a lot better, in my opinion, because digital cameras tend to be overly sharp and don't look particularly vintage. So let's open up Premiere with a couple of sample clips that I filmed. Now, quick disclaimer, I recommend to get all the color grading done ideally before you apply those effects, okay? Otherwise it makes it more difficult later on. Now, I personally recommend to use footage that has some sort of contrast between like very bright parts and strong shadows because that is where you're gonna notice those effects the most, okay? So first up, we're gonna create an adjustment layer and put that right above the clip. Next, we're gonna apply channel blur for halation. Now you wanna head over to the effects panel and then just search for the term channel blur and drag and drop that onto your clip. Now we're going to isolate the red channel to create the halation effect. Remember, we want this to be only visible in the reds to emulate film. So I like to set the red blurriness to a value of around 50. Now, if you zoom in, you should now see a subtle red outline on the bright areas of your footage. Now, in order to make this effect a little bit more natural and organic, I like to change the blend mode of the adjustment layer to lighten. And this will basically soften the red fringe a bit and make it more organic. If the effect is too strong, you can also decrease the opacity of the adjustment layer and just play around with the setting a little bit until you are satisfied and it isn't too much like in your face. In my example, I guess I could reduce it like quite a bit to like 70 or 80%. Now let's look at the before and after and you'll notice like a little red lines around the edges and I think it looks pretty awesome and is just what I wanted to achieve. Now in the second part of the video, I'll show you how to create the bloom effect. But before we finish, I wanted to highlight a really cool platform where you can find all kinds of editing assets that will help you to sell this film effect. It is called Motion Array and they made today's video possible. So let me demonstrate for you. All I have to do is log on and type in a keyword like vintage and that gives me so many clips and templates and sound effects to match this specific style. Those kind of assets really help you to make it more convincing. So for example, I could use these kind of film burns as a transition in between clips or I can find some really cool textures that I can overlay on top of my video. If you sign up for a year, it costs like $19 per month and that pretty much hooks you up with everything you need for your videos, stuff like music, sound effects, presets, stock video, you name it. And I got a special treat for you. If you sign up through my affiliate link, you'll save like 50 US dollars on top of all of that meaning you'll pay only like 17 bucks per month for everything that you need as a video creator. It is much more useful than spending money on camera gear that you barely use. So once again, massive thanks to Motion Array. And with that said, let's crack on with the rest of the tutorial. Okay, next, let me show you the bloom effect with another clip. And for that one, 
you want to start by duplicating your clip on a new layer by holding down the Option key on a Mac or Alt on a Windows. First, we want to isolate the highlights with an effect which is called Luma Key. You can think of it of a mask that isolates only brightness. So I just search in Luma Key in the Effects panel, drag and drop that, and then I can play around with the cutoff settings until only the brightest parts are visible. And that is where the bloom effect should happen. And in order to see that a little bit better, you can simply turn off the visibility of the bottom layer. And now if I move around the threshold, I can see which area is affected. So in my particular example, I think the cutoff value is best around here, but it obviously varies a lot depending on the footage that you use. Cool. Now we got one last step to kind of give it a chef's kiss and that is adding a Gaussian blur to the top clip to make it a little bit more blurry and dreamy. So once again, I head over to the effects panel and I just search for the word Gaussian blur and I drag and drop that. And then I like to set the blurriness to a value of like higher than 60. And I also like to make sure that the repeat edge pixels option is checked to avoid the edges getting a little bit too harsh. Now, once again, let's look at the before and after and you notice a very beautiful soft glow around the highlights, giving your footage that nostalgic bloom and everything is a lot softer and very, very vintage and cool. And wow, congratulations, like digital high five. If you found this helpful, you might also wanna check out this video right here where I created a homemade disposable lens that also looks super, super vintage and awesome. You can use it with your digital camera. So make sure to check that out. And with that said, I'll see you guys later in one of the next videos.